What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm not gonna lie, this is about the ninth time I've tried to record this intro because I keep burping because I've been drinking one of these. Anyway guys, we are gonna jump into a completely new band again, which was requested by my man, Corey McNulty on Patreon. Yes, I was about to say Corey Taylor there, but no hate for Corey Taylor today. You know, I know every video it seems I'm just hating on Corey Taylor, but today it's all love for the Corys. Corey, I appreciate you supporting the channel. Corey has made use of the Patreon album tier, which is now officially sold out. I need to like leave it sold out for a while so I can catch up. Corey's is actually the last album request that I have of the five that I got in the last like, week and a half. Anyways, let's jump into today's album. It is Jackpot User. And like I said, Corey did recommend this and he did say the following. Check out their newest album, Jackpot User. So it came out in 2022. They're a metalcore band from California with very unique sound. Their defining features are the beautiful high vocal harmonies of their lead vocalist, Tillian Pearson, the nonsensical Mimi harsh vocals of John Mess, and the melodic tap riffs of their guitarist, Will Swan. I recommend checking out the instrumental versions of their albums if you like it on your own time because I found a lot of things I didn't quite catch from the normal tracks. They're definitely not super heavy, but you like the melodic stuff, so I'm pretty sure this will be right up your alley. Keep up the good work. Love you, man. Corey. The love is mutual, my friend. Again, thank you so much for getting involved in the tier. Guys, drop a like in this video. In this video? Drop a like on this video or in the video. I don't know how it works. Just drop a like anywhere. Maybe just one of my other videos. I don't know what I'm talking about, right? Make sure you're subbed to the channel. These videos are long form, very long form. This video is over at least an hour and a half, I'm going to say, because this album is like an hour and three minutes, so it's going to be long. The algorithm doesn't necessarily like long form videos anymore. As you guys know, it's all shorts, 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 TikTok, Instagram reels, YouTube shorts. So I'm trying, I feel a bit like, I feel like a bit of a boomer creating videos that are like two hours long. So if you could help out, drop a like in the video just to get it, like share it to people that actually do want to see it because a lot of the time it'll just get buried because the watch time won't be that great. The percentage of video viewed because people just click off or people only go to the favorite parts. So all I ask for is a like guys. Without any further ado, let's jump into Jackpot Juicer from Dance Gavin Dance. All right, lads, I'm gonna include a video. I just went to go to the toilet before it starts because it's a long one and it's absolutely gorgeous outside. I didn't realize how nice the weather was. I'll include a video. I just took a quick video for the video. Video for the video. You get what I mean? And yeah, it's beautiful. I feel like this album artwork perfectly describes the vibe that is outside at the moment. I'm rhyming, describes the vibe that's outside in the video in the video. Anyway, shut up. Violin. moment in the guitar was reminding me so much of another metalcore band oh um, what is it fuck it's definitely a massive swing from what we're used to on the channel recently It's almost impossible to be sad listening to this. I 
feels like when I went back to... Oh, I'm gonna show up for a sec, so I'm just gonna hop him. Nice change of pace. I don't know how I feel about the song overall, but I'm definitely happy that we're jumping into something slightly a little bit different than the channel. Obviously, this the point I was trying to make there was that it reminds me of when we checked out Color Decay by the Devil Wears Prada. Although the Color Decay is feels a little bit more serious in nature and tone overall. Um even the album artwork again is like that great. Even though I do really like the Color Decay album artwork compared to this, although it's very dark and depressing, it's just very unique. Um, it feels like that where I kind of have to like rewire my brain again to like forget the technicality. Yes, there is some, as Corey mentioned, some tapping riffs in there that are quite fun. But it's just overall more focused on the overall vibe of the song. I can see like this at a barbecue, like I said, on a summer's day, like the video I included. Um, just very uplifting, very good spirited. Not the most technical from what I've heard so far. Again, very catchy vocals. Track wasn't my favorite, but I'm sure based on what I've heard so far, there's going to be a few tracks in this that are going to be stuck in my playlist for the next few weeks to come, especially coming into the summer months in Ireland and enjoying the little sun that we do actually get over here. So yeah, the track, there's like 18 tracks in this, so I'm sure we're going to find at least a few that are going to be on playlist for a while. But uh, yeah, an interesting start. Again, it's like it's a rewiring of the brain to forget about the technicality so much and just focus on the music for what it is instead of like expecting something from it. But there was a riff there. I can't think of what it is. It was right here. You keep your ego from exploding. Check yourself and you'll be right. What is that, man? Oh god. Right, I'm gonna put this in in the edits because I'm never gonna forget this. Or I'm never gonna remember this. Oh god, it's just that one. Oh man. Oh, it's 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 something from Dayseeker. Yeah, it's Dayseeker. It's one of the Dayseeker tracks. God, yeah. I'll include it in the video after, but it's definitely off the Dark Sun album. Anyway, let's move on. I don't want to hang myself on Jesus Christ, Drew. I don't want to get myself hung up on. Jesus, I need to be careful what I'm saying there. So, like, look at the albums I've reacted to over the last few weeks, if not months. I'm already dead. I'm 
this is literally the perfect gateway album into metal because it has some like technicality in it with the like metalcore-esque tapping riffs but everything else is like so pop even some of the like the harsher vocals That's get in my basket. Get me to the beach or something. I don't even like the beach, but that's why I feel like I need to be listening to A grower and a half. That's gotta be one of their more popular tracks. Let me check this shit out. Yeah, that's. See, I knew that. That's their most popular track. I swear to God, I didn't know that was their most popular track. But that felt like a really popular mainstream artist, the way he's delivering some of those vocals. I can't remember which vocalist it is or which track it is I'm thinking of. That was a fucking fun track, man. Yeah, I kind of figured we'd get some playlist tracks, but to get one that quickly, we're three tracks in. First one doesn't really count, so it's really 17 tracks. We have another, what, 15 to go? So hopefully we get a few more of those. That has 11 million views. And it's their most viewed on the album. I don't think it's the most lyrically dense subject matter, so I'm not really that bothered about the lyrics. I'm just focused on the overall vibe of the track. As annoying and cliche as it is to say, I'm interested in the vibe of the song. This song is a vibe, but, you know, it, it fucking is, alright? Look at the album artwork. I don't know how to take the harsh vocals just yet, but the cleans are so melodic. It's just like everything he says is catchy. But it is a nice contrast, I guess, between the two. Loving the clean mix in the background, just a.
Yeah, Corey's advised that their sound hasn't really evolved over the years, but he's saying it's definitely a good thing because they can get away with it. They're so good at what they do. So I'm guessing they have a lot of other albums that sound similar to this, which is going to be interesting to see if people want to see me check out more of the discography. But loving this so far, so different. Has that like, um, like Bruno Mars from a few years ago vibe. Was that Uptown Funk? That kind of vibe? Yeah, that bass is very funky. So groovy, you know? It's definitely got Dayseeker vibes off of some of the harsher vocals. And even the way it's building right now is very Dayseeker. Yeah, but this is where they're coming into their own, this funk build up. What the fuck are these lyrics? They can just get away with it. Oh man, I want to see this vocalist. You know what sometimes when you hear a vocalist and you're like, I want to see what this guy looks like. Everything they sing is so catchy. Oh my god, yeah. Tilly and Pearson. Let me see if he looks like what he sounds like. Oh, he's unbelievably attractive. Oh my god. This man has it all. Holy fuck. You're telling me he sings that good and he looks like that. Just... How was that fair? Well, that's ruined my day. Like such a contagious feeling, you know. This has me so excited for summer lads. Oh. just like it's so easy listening like it, like it's an hour and three minutes long the bass is so funky fucking hell that is class man fuck yeah, those vocals are so contagious it makes me so happy oh my god um let me pause real quick yeah, so I seen the length and I was like, fuck, because the last few albums I've had problems with the length. And I feel like this is one of those albums that's just going to not feel like an hour and three minutes long because, again, 18 minutes or 18 tracks, I should say. So it's breaking up like every few minutes it's breaking track. It's not like longer tracks that just feel like they're really, you know, dragging on. I feel like we're getting significant changes, especially because they have so much versatility. Again, it's all kind of derived around this funk sound. 
But the lead vocalist is so, like I keep saying contagious, he's so catchy, like every, you just want to sing along, even though I don't know the lyrics, I feel like I already want to sing along. Uh, and then, it's not, although I'm not the biggest fan of the harsh vocals, it reminds me of some of Dayseeker's Sleep Talk album, um, but then when it actually builds up, it's kind of more, you know, it's again, that funky Bruno Mars-esque feel to it, where you just, it's impossible to be sad listening to it, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, it's constantly changing the songs, we're always evolving, obviously, over an hour and three minutes, I don't know what the average is, but there's 18 tracks, so it's constantly changing. So I feel like this might get away with not feeling too long, because again, it's very light on the ears as well, compared to some of the heavier albums that are like over an hour long, I'm like, right, I get it, you know, there's only so long you can actually be screamed at for, no matter how much you like the heavier elements of metal, it's always, uh, it's always nice to break it up a little bit because sometimes, you know, just the harsh side of it can be very intense, especially with a set of headphones that are this good, although they are good and they, you know, they don't oversaturate your ears, they don't pierce your ears in any way, shape or form, but it just is very jarring to listen to something for that long that is that heavy. So this is a very welcome change of pace. Shout out to Corey. It's not really like reaction worthy content, but it is very nice to listen to. Like, what the fuck are these lyrics? They're lucky that they're talented in every other aspect because this writing is. Keep it out of my sight. Oh, is that like a harmonica? Or an accordion? Or both? It's like panning, the delay is panning. So you know it ain't right. You wanna burn some money? Hop on a flight to pay. Oh yeah, the lead in my left ear. It's a lot of fun. I forgot to like some of these tracks, but I feel like this is one of those albums that is so easy to listen to from start to finish. So me liking it probably isn't very, you know, a very accurate sign of whether or not I'm really fucking with it. Because everything so far has just been... And I will start liking again from now on. I probably should have liked the last track that was very catchy. It has that like old school emo feel, that old emo metalcore feel, but it feels so modern as well with the clean vocals. Contrast is really fucking nice. It's always so nice to get these requests and have like a description of what's going on because otherwise I'd be still questioning whether or not it's the same vocalist and I'd be like, oh, these are layered vocals. How do they play this live? And obviously, two different vocalists going back and forth, which is pretty cool. Yeah, 
Bravo. Yeah, they're really lucky that they're talented in every other aspect apart from lyric writing. Fuck me. This is like proper radio material here in the most complimentary way possible. So catchy. Is this is kind of stuff I could hear. I could like actually play in my kitchen when I'm like making food and my mom won't fucking try and kick me out of the house for. Maybe some of the harsher vocals, she might be like, Archer, fuck off now. Okay. How do they do that? That's gotta be post production. I don't know. I don't know if that's even possible to hammer on that quickly. Sounds more post production. Let me know. Anyway, yeah, these lyrics are awful. One man's cringe. Is it like intentionally like stupid lyrics because they're so good in every other aspect that they're like, ah, oh, we can just literally write whatever we want. Almost feels like a social experiment where it's like, let's see if we can just write the most stupid lyrics possible and still make really good tracks that people don't even realize. Almost feels like a shot at like radio music where it's like, these people don't actually even give a fuck about what's being said on the radio, as long as it sounds like in that radio format. Harsh vocals kind of remind me of Eskimo Callboy's delivery. That's kind of what I was thinking. Or Electric Callboy, whatever they're called. Then change name.
Hi, Polyphia. What's going on? Tim Henson just showed up out of nowhere. Just typing out points here, just discuss at a later point. Because I sometimes just forget what I was actually thinking throughout the entirety of the album. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's funny. I was wondering where that name was coming from. One man's cringe is another man's tattoo. Yeah. I know that feeling. It feels bad, man. These guys are proper... They feel like a Twitch... They're, they're Twitch fanboys. They have that Twitch humor. You're alive Do you ever really stop and wonder why Is your soul Fortified By the tiny twinkling light inside your eyes Oh, another night Should you live with your regrets or just get high That bass is just so fucking sick in this mix as well. It's really shining in this mix. Which is so nice to hear the bass actually like prominent in the mix. But the bass is really leading the groove and then the the guitar is really just prominent in the leads, which just kind of gives an overall ambience to it, a nice uplifting feel, like very summery feel. But the bass is really like prominent. That lead is so good. It's so summery. Oh my god. I can literally say anything, his voice is that good. Again, don't look at me not liking the tracks as like any way, shape, or form of saying 
that I'm not into this album. I think this is going to be one of my like most played albums of the year. I'm not going to lie. I think from a liking standpoint, the likes helped me to establish the tracks that kind of... It's like a way of narrowing down the tracks for the best songs I've heard throughout the year. Now, whether or not these are going to fall into that, obviously time will tell. But I think this album overall is going to be one of my most played albums of the year because it's just so easy listening. Not all the time I'm in the mood for like the heavy breakdown, intense vocal style metalcore slash deathcore that I've been listening to a lot lately. A lot of the time my daily listening is like Bad Omens, Dayseeker. So obviously that is where Corey was coming from with suggesting this album. It doesn't have the like big climactic payoffs that Bad Omens do and Dayseeker do to a certain extent. extent. The Dark Sun is a little bit like more like this. But I think Dark Sun is definitely a lot more serious. This one is like the complete grab a beer, uh, back garden, barbecue, friends over. Even if they're not into metal, you could still throw this in the background as like a mood setter, a vibe setter. And then also I can see myself driving to this one down the back roads in the country, like sun coming down again. I can also see myself just listening to this in the gym as well, because sometimes in the gym as well, I feel like you don't want that intensity as well. You want to be able to go in and just kind of focus. And sometimes the blasting metal kind of just like makes you push too hard in certain aspects or you just can't really focus so much because it's so intense and you want to kind of almost slow down and like feel a contraction in the muscles. This is going so weird. But, you know, sometimes I've found, this, found that with metal where I almost like rush through workouts because I'm listening to something that's so intense where sometimes you want to actually like slow down. You know, if you're on a kind of like a, a not so intense gym day where you're just kind of going through the motions or you want to get the workout in because you're not on like a heavy day or whatever it's nice to have something else as well. And I feel like I've kind of gone through a lot of like Saul, Deathcore, intense metalcore albums over the last while. So this is definitely a nice change of pace. And like I said, we'll probably be up there with one of my most listened to albums of the year. I don't know if it's going to be my favorite album of the year, but it's one of these that every track is just like a non-skip. There's nothing very skippable about this album. It all sounds so fucking soothing on the ears. It's very nice. Radio friendly. Yeah. Vocalist is insane as well. Like he's so incredible. He's one of the most talented vocalists I've heard on this channel. Like, his highs are, like, ridiculous. Up there with anything you'd hear on the radio, you know? like the actual delivery as well it's like the actual writing just is so catchy again they kind of have a lot of freedom with what they can write because they just seem to write about literally fucking whatever comes to their head so they can kind of just find the most optimal words that allow for the vocalist to do his thing because they just clearly are just like yeah let's talk about this and we'll mix it with this and yeah that'll work Pitch shifted 
Uh, Jared, who's the guy from Rune 5? Is it? I think it's Jared Leto, is it? Jared Leto. No, that's the fucking actor, what? Wait. Why am I thinking of Jared Leto? Wait, what? Jared Leto is 30 Seconds to Mars and also an actor? Anyway, I don't know. Maroon 5, who's it again? Maroon 5. What's this dude's name? Adam Levine. I don't know why I got Jared Leto out of that. I have no fucking clue, but it sounds like a pitch shifted Adam Levine. are the kings of writing hooks. Wow. Everything is so catchy. Everything he says. Now I'm thinking of, what is it, Watermelon Sugar? Is that Harry Styles or something? Watermelon Sugar. Ha. Watermelon sugar. Yeah, Harry Styles. I'm getting the vibes off this song. When you cut me open, cut and save me for what's on the stolen. Slowly erosion, cut me open. Second side of going through the motions. Make me cold in a Playlist for sure. That's another playlist track for sure. So fucking catchy. Yeah. Again, it's not really like reaction worthy content. It's just very good music. That guy's voice. It's piss I'm just thinking about how good looking he is as well, and it's pissing me off. I 
what kind of like bands do these guys play live with? Because I don't, I can't think of any other band that they'd really fit with. Maybe a band like Dayseeker? I don't know. I said their live shows are a lot of fun though. You can see like a lot of high energy. Beach balls flying everywhere and shit. Again, that bass is just carrying the groove. good like background music for live streaming yeah that's that's perfect i can feel like listen to this while i'm chatting perfect and it's not like generic copyright free background music it's actually like good music still it's like upbeat and fun Metalcore here. Dun, 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 that was the first moment where I felt like I was actually swinging my head to it a bit. Again, it's much the same. Very Adam Levine again. Like, where could I even critique this at all? I can't critique it from like the, the technicality standpoint because like it's not their vibe. And who am I to critique a vocalist? You know what I mean? No, I've definitely done it before, but that's just more on my personal preference. This is so fucking catchy. I hate to say it's a vibe, but words are escaping me. I kind of see why people just say it's a vibe now, because it just perfectly describes what it is. Even though it doesn't actually describe anything, ironically it describes nothing, but it also describes absolutely everything. So I understand why people say that throwaway comment now. What am I gonna do? Break down the lyrics? They make no fucking sense. The lead sounds a lot of fun to play. There's two leads layered over each other here with the bass as well. In the background. It's, it's actually interesting because there's two leads. One's playing in my right ear. That's playing in my right ear. And then there's the... That's playing like bottom left. It's actually very... Like it's it's creating like a, a space. I can, it's very, it feels very spatial where I can hear like the mix is like separated into, you know, it's panned both sides. But then there's a lot of space in here as well, if that makes sense. Yeah, like the vocals are straight down the middle. And we've got two... I think I met the one who posted my bail. 
He's got the very obvious lead on my right ear. And then there's like a, an undertone. And the bass is down the middle with the vocals as well, from what I can hear. This is track 14 of 18. I could turn this on at any track and get what I'm looking for out of it, you know? feels like it could be an outro track i know it's not there's three tracks left but i feel like it could probably finish here but again it's so easy to listen to it could just keep going like this could be like a long drive album where you just keep letting it play you know but on the topic of outros let me just go to the toilet real quick before you do get into the last three tracks i've done well it's 58 minutes in and it's my first toilet break okay so give me a break back in a few minutes and just like that i'm back let's get into current events Alright. Metalcore. Why are the lyrics on? 
Talking heads, fuck the feds. So well read, I'm impressed. How did you acquire all this undue confidence by babbling about current events and begging people smash that bike? like taking notes as I go still um, so I'll kind of touch on a lot of the main talking points both positive and negative that I have at the end of the video I'm just gonna let the rest of the album play out if you see me like just kind of not paying attention still listening just typing away
gonna end Paul here in a minute because it's just been a lot of me typing. Uh, because nothing's really evoked any emotion for me for this part. Yeah, the last um, few minutes have definitely gotten a bit samey. It's not like ear fatigue because it's not that heavy, but it's just kind of like almost running, sounding a little monotone now because I've just heard it for the last like 50 minutes or so. We're down to the last two tracks. I'll speak about it in more detail in the outro with my roundup. I've taken a lot of notes, both positive and negative. But like, there's nothing to even really import at this point anymore. I feel like I've heard their best so far. Well, I've definitely heard what they're capable of. Maybe not their best, but... Everything that's followed has just been like variations of the same sound. This is literally day seeker. That moment there was anyway. That's the heaviest we've heard from them as well. Maybe not the heaviest, but it definitely felt the most metalcore, traditional metalcore. Or traditionally modern metalcore that I've listened to at least. speak about it in a sec but it feels like a stalemate album at the moment i'll speak on why in a second I'll explain what i mean by stalemate Yeah, 
So what I mean is, let me see if they give me a minute to speak. Oh, well, I need to pause for the last track. Yeah, I'll get a second. So it's very good in the sense that it's doing exactly what it sets out to do. You know, I've discussed all of the positives throughout the entire album. I do not need to really, you know, touch on everything. I will discuss that in the outro where I round up my thoughts and rate the album. But it's like sitting in that exact middle ground of it's not like intense enough or even that different enough or there's no moments in it that are like blowing my mind enough to evoke any like emotion or even like there's nothing thought provoking about it but it's also so good that there's nothing you know like i can't critique it you know it's kind of like it's not mind-blowing but it's also not like it's it's well produced so catchy I'll discuss the cookie cutter elements to it in a little bit. I have that written down on my notes. It's kind of like one of the negatives. But it's like that perfect middle ground of like, I feel like I don't know what to say because it's like, yeah, it's just like almost like becoming background music. Like I said, it'd be great for like Twitch Twitch streams where you can have like a nice upbeat song in the background to set a tone. Um, some of the tracks definitely are like really like playlist worthy bangers, especially towards the start of the album. But everything right now is kind of falling a little bit on deaf ears. So... I'll discuss in a lot more detail. I'll have a good few notes that I want to touch on at the end of this track, but I'll just let it play out. But I just want to bring attention to the fact that I've kind of just sat here for the last like four tracks, just kind of like I've said everything I need to say. It hasn't changed much. It's gotten a little bit more intense, maybe a little bit heavier, but like not enough for me to be wowed by it or anything like that. interesting effect on the guitar that's pan to my left it's like a real liquid phaser Get, it's getting a bit boring i'm not gonna lie i'm bored that's the best way the last few tracks have been bored I feel like I've been hypercritical of albums over the last while, but the more albums I listen to, the more critical I get. Because I've heard so much, so much talent. So like pacing is so important, content is so important, context is so important. So many things that like I never really would have like put too much focus on when listening to music. But it's when you get to like the upper echelon albums, it's the small details that actually make them the upper echelon, you know? 
simple things like just pacing if I'm bored at certain parts, like did it run too long, was it too short? Does it have enough kind of like dynamic shift throughout? Again, this isn't one of those albums, but I can't help but feel bored because it's not one of those, you know? Okay, right, so I've got a lot of points, so let's not waste any time and jump straight in. That was Dance Gavin Dance with their, uh, and look, don't know if they're listening to me, but this is very day seeker, that entire album, especially tracks off of it. So that was Jackpot Juicer, and I'm going to just go straight into my notes because I have quite a bit to say. So let's start with the positives, as always, guys. Again, this is something I'm getting used to, is like actually writing down my thoughts as I go, because a lot of the time... I just brains, I just spew things that I try to remember from like an hour of listening. A lot of the time I make comments in the first one or two tracks. And then by the end of the video, I don't like round up the video correctly because I can't remember what I said. So I try to just take notes as I go. So some of the har harsher vocals, these aren't necessarily pros, but they're just more observations, but they're kind of falling into the pro category because they're not a con, I guess. It's just an observation, but there's also going to be pros here and then we'll clearly define where the cons come in. So a lot of the harsher vocals reminds me of Electric Callboy in the harsh vocal segments. Again, not really a pro or a con, it's just an observation. Uh, album, very easy listening. Need an album like this. Honestly, I've been listening to like uh, you've just seen pop up there. A lot of Dayseeker as my kind of like break from some of the heavier stuff. A lot of Bad Omens, even though Bad Omens is that like perfect blend of both the weekend-esque pop culture, pop vocal sound mixed with the metal music that I love. Bad Omens did that absolutely incredibly well. They find that balance insanely well. It's going to be hard to even get near Bad Omens who come to do that like blend. Um, so Dayseeker, Bad Omens, I believe like Holding Absence maybe are a little bit like this. I think they're probably a little bit heavier than these guys, but I've still not checked them out. They actually have a new single out tomorrow, I think. I need to get to that. Um, stupid lyrics that they get away with because the music is so catchy. Like they're so fuck. like the lyrics in that were just so ridiculous. Again, I told myself that I wouldn't pay too much attention to it because it didn't seem like a lyrically dense album, which I was correct in saying because I looked at it, every time I looked at it, it just made no sense. But because of how talented the vocalist is and the overall instrumentals, the production, they can get away with it. So it's kind of like a pro, to be honest. Although it may come across as a as a con because everything else is so well, it's like you just completely overlook it. It's like pop music on the radio. It's so catchy that you don't care what the lyrics are as long as you can sing along with it. Um, the bass I have written down here is Pure Bliss really shines and gives that Bruno Mars funk groove very, very accessible. So even if you're not that into bass, you can almost like completely like hear that shining through. I feel like someone who doesn't even know the difference between like differentiating between the different uh, instruments that are coming on will just know that sound instantly. They'll be like, oh, that bass is fucking nice. And yeah, a lot of tracks, it really shines through. Clean vocalist, already touched on him slightly, but is absolutely incredible. His high notes are absolutely insane. Not really heard anyone hit the high notes as like radio friendly as he can do it there's definitely other artists again like no sebastian who sounds like he could be on the radio if he wasn't in bad omens but this felt like the most polished radio friendly vocal delivery that i've heard uh, sounds like adam levine from maroon 5 to a certain extent maybe a little bit higher pitched than adam levine which is again another compliment uh, great production on the overall album uh, the panning of the lead guitar in certain tracks made tracks feel very spacious so like i mentioned in the middle of it it felt like the vocals were going down the middle of the headset or like, you know, if we think about the, the spatial feel of the track, you know, I could feel that the vocals were in the center with the bass. It was very bassy in the middle. And then it was very airy on the outside with the lead. And then there was like a background guitar in the left ear and some of the tracks. So that was pretty cool. Um, some really fun, funky guitar riffs that made me want to work on my lead playing. I've always been very rhythm orientated with my playing. So yes, any video I've ever really put up has always been like, rhythm moments in songs i just naturally go to them because they're generally like leading into a breakdown or something like that so it's always more fun to play on the electric but i do definitely need to you know up my lead playing game so this album has kind of inspired me in a way to actually get into you know learning some cool solos and even just some like you know some licks or even some tapping riffs like we had in this album and um, what else did i say so unfortunately i have to say it's kind of cringe but as a positive, as a pro, it's a vibe. I have that written in capital letters because ironically, it describes this album so well, but also makes absolutely no sense. And I always hate when people describe things as a vibe because it's literally like, what is it? Like, what do you mean by that? But now I understand because this is literally like, it just creates this summer vibe. But I feel like 
I don't need to say it's a summer vibe. When I say it's a vibe, you guys know what I'm talking about. And I think that's why it's such an effective way of describing something. Because when I say it's a vibe, you just know what I'm talking about straight away. So I don't really need to describe, to describe it. Again, very ironic because it's describing the album perfectly, in my opinion, but also describes absolutely nothing. But I feel like it's one of these things that people just pick up on. Because if someone was to say it's a vibe, I just know what they're talking about. So that's a pretty cringe way of assessing a pro of the album. But I feel like you guys will get what I mean. Um, the last pro I have is, is a great entry level metalcore music. So again, it's probably on the very cusp of being metalcore. Again, some of the heavier moments definitely would, you know, make it fall into that category of metal or metalcore. Um, you know, I think it'd be a great entry level metalcore band or even a metal, just metal music in general. Uh, it would have been a great band for me a few years back to ease my way into the genre. So obviously I kind of jumped into the into the, the deep end, which obviously now is probably beneficial to me because I've just like been able to kind of catch up quite quickly. Um, but I think something like this would have made more sense from a, like a, an order standpoint. So I think this would be a good band to show to someone who's maybe not into metal to try and just like ease their way in. If they think that they want to get into the genre, they've maybe heard some songs that they like, but then they hear heavier stuff that they don't like. I'd say, you know, maybe start with something like this. And then you kind of progress your way into like maybe some day seeker because obviously they're not as heavy and then maybe bad omens and then you can kind of get into the more you know traditionally heavy metalcore band silent planet invent anime currents and then you can see where they go from there so in the same breath after all that i'll go into the pro or the cons um although it is great it's fantastic production's great vocalist is great it can feel a little cookie cutter because it's so radio friendly. So it does feel very similar to a lot of sounds that I've heard before on the radio, which is why it's kind of like good because it's catchy and that's what makes it radio friendly, but it's also cookie cutter, sounds quite samey to a lot of the stuff I have heard on the radio. So it gets a bit boring, which is another point that I'll make going on in a few seconds. But the harsh vocals help to break that up and make it feel like the interesting spin on the metalcore genre that it definitely is. Like, I mean, there's no denying that it's definitely if we look at it from the metalcore space, it's very, very unique and it's not cookie cutter at all because metalcore can be like one certain sound. So when you take this in the context of metalcore, this sounds very unique. However, if you look at this in the context of like pop music, it's kind of like, ah, yeah, it sounds a lot like a lot of other artists I've heard, but it does have like a cool, unique, harsher element, which makes it unique in the pop scene, but also still sounds very much the same. But in the metalcore scene, it sounds so fucking unlike anything I've heard before. So uh, it got a little samey towards the end of the album. Maybe could have been a track or two shorter, uh, but it's so easy listening that it's not fatiguing. So yeah, it got boring towards the end. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I think the last like four tracks, I kind of just faded out a bit and I just focused more on typing my list up, which is what I'm speaking through now. Uh, I was still listening very actively, but... There was nothing that really grabbed my attention. It just did get a little bit samey. Everything started to sound similar. And I got bored, lost interest. So I think it could definitely do with cutting off two or three tracks towards the end of the album. But guys, that is my honest review. If you did enjoy it, please do leave a like on the video. Let me know what your rating is. My rating, I'm going to sit with a... For a metalcore album, I think it's probably like a... Um, and, uh, 7.9 i'll go with 7.9 i think maybe it could fall into an 8 because it's like definitely as i said as cringe as it is it is a vibe and it's something so out of the ordinary for metalcore so for the music that i listen to on a regular basis it's quite unique so maybe i could give it that 8 rating but i think just as an album in general i think it's like a 7.5 to a 7.9 so you know we'll settle on a 7.9 overall i think it's a fair assessment of this album um, but yeah, guys, let me know in the comment section down below if you did watch up until this point. If you did, obviously drop a like. It'd be much, much appreciated, guys. If you do want to make use of the Patreon album tier, then do get involved. Patreon.com forward slash Drew Fortune. Like I said, it's currently sold out. When you're watching this video, it may vary. So keep an eye on the album tier on Patreon, which again is linked in the description, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subbed to the channel. I'm signing out. Look after yourselves. See you in the next one. Cheers. Running on fumes like